So last Sunday, we uh, started a series that's going to take us uh, through um, all the Sundays of December, and we're calling it uh, Radiance. It's based on uh, this Bible verse in Hebrews 1.3, where it says the sun is the radiance of God's glory. The sun is the radiance of God's glory. And so we looked at uh, last week just this, uh, uh, this, this Jesus who is this radiance, you know, that's what we're uh, thinking about as we go into uh, this uh, season of Advent, that he's just this radiance, this radiance. The sub-question uh, that we're asking uh, the, uh, with, uh, connected with this series is that you know Jesus, but do you know Jesus? Uh, again, there's something about Jesus that we know him, that we can follow him, but even as you know Jesus, do you know him? I think there's always more to know about him. I think there's more radiance that is always going to be uh, with us. I mean, this is a pretty fascinating Bible verse, that the sun is the radiance of God's glory, God's glory. And all of that means, again, we have a lot of uh, bright things. We've got these bright lights up here, uh, bright lights in our c- uh, culture, uh, bright lights, you know, the TVs are getting better, more crystal clear. What is this for ultra thing? That, you know, if you got a $1,000 uh, or, or more, you can get the latest and greatest kind of flat screen, more picture, more, you know, get the sound, all that kind of stuff. Lots of, lots of uh, radiance coming at us. But again, we know that um, a TV, every TV has an on and off uh, um, uh, switch. We're Jesus, he's always radiant. There's, there, there's more radiance to come uh, with him. And so that's our hope and our prayer over these next number of weeks is that uh, you'll be more drawn to this radiance where it won't be blinding radiance, but it's radiance that could be blinding, um, but it's radiance that, that Jesus just keeps opening up and he draws you, keeps drawing you towards him. You, you can't resist, you're kind of drawn, maybe it's even like a moth drawn to the light, but not to, to be, be destroyed by that light, but to have life like you have never even imagined would be possible, this radiance, this radiance, this radiance of who this Jesus is. So last week we looked at uh, John chapter 8, the story where there was this unexpected collision that the, these people had with uh, radiance. The scribes and the Pharisees had uh, an unexpected collision. Uh, the disciples had an unexpected collision. The people that had been gathered around Jesus before these scribes and Pharisees came and before they brought this adulterous woman uh, with her that they had caught, you know, nothing about the adulterous man. We kind of covered that last week. But they all had an unexpected collision and none of them left, none of them left without having an experience, an unexpected collision with the radiance of who Jesus is. So we saw these scribes and Pharisees who were hot. They're were, they were after Jesus. They're re- they ready not to really stone this woman, but they're ready to go after Jesus. And Jesus, they, 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 they come at Jesus, they're all hot, they're all, and they have this unexpected collision, and Jesus reaches down and scribbles in the dirt, and you can just feel the temperature of them all come down, and they all eventually leave. They leave, they leave, and they all leave Jesus and this woman, and this woman who was probably just some frozen in horror, just frozen in horror that uh, her life had come to this. She had an unexpected collision with radiance too as Jesus just warmly forgave her and sent her away and the radiance I don't think ever left her and the radiance would grow as she would hear more and learn more about Jesus and follow Jesus, follow Jesus. She had that one moment, she has, but she had a, a soul that matters for eternity and so Jesus reached into her, her heart, her life, her soul and healed her with some Radiant, some radiance. And then right after that, uh, um, that story in John chapter 8, in verse 12, again, mo- most of our Bible is kind of separated into the next story, but uh, I kind of said maybe we should connect it because Jesus says in verse 12 of John chapter 8, I'm the light of the world. He's just this radiance. The gospel of John um, is, I, I think, just a fascinating gospel. It's, it's way different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, John does some things with images. We're going to look at how he uh, has a, kind of this word play with the word word, if you can follow that. He has a word play with the word word. And we're going to look at John chapter 1 for the first 18 verses in today's uh, message. And so he, when he opens up his gospel, he just has this word play with this word word. But um, we end up realizing that the word that he's talking about is Jesus. I mean, wherever you read the word word, you could read the, the word uh, Jesus. And he makes sure that we get it all in John uh, uh, verse 14 of uh, chapter 1. And then he does this stuff with light. 
He does this stuff with light that we're going to read about the, this morning and, 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 and the darkness and, uh, uh, again, just the, the wonder. And so I, I just, I think uh, John, uh, as you read his gospel, as you study his gospel, as you uh, live in his gospel over the years, again, this isn't just a one-time shot. For some of you, you've, you've read the gospel of John before, uh, and maybe you've read it repeatedly. I invite you to read the gospel of John as we go through this as a season of Advent. All of our messages are going to come from the gospel of John. Next week, we're going to look at John chapter 3, verses kind of 1 to 18, that John 3, 16, and maybe we'll see some more radiance of this Bible verse that we know and sometimes we're so familiar with that there, we kind of, it, it dims, but I, I'm hoping that maybe there will be some more radiance that will shine uh, next week. But I want us to look at these first 18 verses from the Gospel of John. Again, the opening kind of story the images of, of John and, and just what he wants it to do that we would, again, that you know Jesus, but do you know Jesus the way that John is describing him, him, him here? Can you, can you realize that you can come back to this John chapter 1 a month from now and you'll still be uh, attracted and there'll, there'll be more radiance. So come back from a, a year from now or from two years from now or a decade from now or two decades from now and the gospel of John will so like a lot of the places of the Bible, there will just be more radiance of who this uh, Jesus is. So I'm going to read the first 18 verses, but for us to just kind of experience these 18 verses to, together, um, and because it's these inspired words uh, of God and it's all about Jesus, would we, uh, would you mind, could we just stand and uh, honor Jesus as we read these words about him being this radiant word, uh, the title of today's message. So we read uh, in John chapter one, again, the opening uh, thoughts of, of this gospel of John. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the, the, the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to, uh, as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God." And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. In many churches at this point, the uh, person that was reading the scripture would say, this is God's word, and the people would respond, thanks be to God, and so let's do that today. This is God's word. Be you may be seated. So again, just, just absolutely uh, fascinated uh, about these opening 18 verses from the Gospel of John. Because uh, one of the things that we see John doing, and uh, again, you don't have to have a lot of a Bible ex uh, um, history, a Bible experience in that, but even if you've just read a little of the Bible, if you ever tried to have read the Bible and you picked it up like a normal book uh, and you open it up to Genesis 1, uh, verse 1, the opening words of the Bible, you would read these words in the beginning. And then it would tell us about the seven days of creation, uh, John is reaching back to that as he begins his gospel writing. It's in the beginning. And he wants to make sure that you don't miss that, miss this. And so he ends up repeating that amazing phrase twice, in the beginning, in the beginning. Again, we know that, uh, uh, that there, there's this thing called time. We know that we have a beginning. We believe that we will have an end. 
Uh, you know, that's the, what you just observed. That's our human uh, cult, our human nature, our human experience. And that we know that we had a beginning. We know that we we're going to have an end. We watch other babies come into this world. They have a beginning. Uh, we watch people leave this world. They know we have the end. But there's this God. There's this God. When the Bible opens up at, in the beginning, there's this God who is before the beginning. There's this God that's going to be after the, uh, our end. There's this God that he just got in the beginning, in the beginning. And then he says, was the word, was the word, was the word. In these first five verses in the Gospel of John, wherever it says the word or makes reference to the word or makes reference to the person, uh, we could put the word, the name, Jesus. Then it would be accurate. And so we could read it like this. In the beginning was Jesus. Jesus was with God. Jesus was God. Jesus was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Jesus. Without Jesus was not anything made that was made. In Jesus was life, and this life was the light of men and this light, this light, that he's going to switch to this image of light. But he wants to make sure that as he's introducing the story of Jesus, as he's introducing the gospel of Jesus, as he's introducing the radiance of Jesus, that we would know that there is this radiant word. And it's Jesus. It's Jesus. The wonder of who this Jesus is. And so over the years as I've come back to this and as I'm coming back to it this morning with us together as uh, New Hope this morning, the, uh, the radiance, the sun is the radiance of God's glory, then there's more radiance than I can take in. There's more radiance than what you can take in. Who is this Jesus? You know this Jesus, but do you know this Jesus? So John goes on with this image, the light uh, in him was life, and this life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the, and the darkness has not overcome it. Can all of us know that there's darkness in this world. There is no one in this room that doesn't know about the darkness in this room. Even for our infants that are in this room, there won't be too long before they know there's some darkness. Again, you, if you're a newspaper person like me, you go home and there's gonna be dark stories in the newspaper. You turn on your TV news, there's gonna be dark stories. Uh, there's just always dark stories. Dark, there's darkness in this world. There's darkness in this world. There's some people, especially here in America, that we think sometimes that, you know, God doesn't do a real good job. I mean, if Jesus is the Messiah, as we were, were singing, is Jesus, is the light of the world as we are saying if Jesus is the savior of the world he, he's the, why isn't he doing a better job and so since he's not doing a better job I don't know that I want to follow that light but let me tell you all the darkness that has happened that's happening now is not going to put out the light of Jesus I mean how much darkness has happened in the years past and in the centuries past and even in our lives how much darkness has happened but this morning this morning this morning Jesus is the light he's shining he's shining he's shining he's shining and there's a hope there's a hope that he brings to us all this world's darkness cannot put out the light of Jesus the light of Jesus is going to overcome the light of Jesus is going to overcome this has brought uh, home to me um, over just these past number of weeks. Uh, many of you know that um, our son, my uh, wife and I, our son, he's our middle child. Uh, he just turned 30 this year, and he served as a Marine for five years. He's been out of the Marines. He's married, lives out in Colorado. Uh, from some of the effects of probably his time in Iraq, um, in, a, in this war, war zone, he ended up having a stroke at the end of, uh, of September. Uh, so it's been a couple of months, and just over this last week or so, he's actually, it seems like he's turned a corner we've been praying been praying and thank you for your prayers and that and he's uh, doing a little bit better uh, but he's talked over uh, over the years uh, to us as his family and to others and that, that he wants to write about his experiences he wants to write about some of his experiences what he experienced in Iraq and so over these last couple of weeks he's been feeling a little bit better and I think he just has felt that it's time and so he uh, sat down and created a Facebook page and wrote an excerpt about him writing into Ramadi for the first time going from the base to into this big armored truck that him and his squad was riding in he just kind of talks about kind of going into the darkness going into the darkness and peeking out a little bit and seeing the landscape and just how just seeing there was just so much darkness and so much destruction already and they were going to get into some horrible things I'm sure he's probably going to write about some of that but again he's been out of that darkness for a few years, even though that darkness is still kind of with him, but we're praying Jesus is light, Jesus is light, Jesus is light, it's gonna keep overcoming that. The other story that he's written is a story that his grandfather told him who fought in World War II. 
uh, I've known of this story ever since I first was dating uh, my Lori and then courting her and um, during our college years, my, our seminary years, when we'd go back to Milwaukee for Christmas and we'd go to church with them on Christmas Eve because we always went to church on Christmas Eve. We actually went to church on all the Sundays and that my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, just, just faithful, faithful followers of, of Jesus. But over the years, uh, he never really was able to, my father-in-law was never able to really sing Silent Night, Holy Night, and he never wanted to tell his two daughters about his experience, but one of the times that he sat down with my son, he kind of told them the full story, that they were uh, in a foxhole on Christmas Eve night, and there was kind of a truce. And then off in the distance, they could hear the German soldiers sing Stilly Knock, Holy Knock, Silent Night, Holy Knock. Uh, Holy Night, that again, the original hymn was written in German many, a uh, couple hundred years ago or more. And so they heard this, and then the American soldiers started singing back, Silent Night, Holy Night, and the Germans used it to locate their position. And on that night, the person right next to my father-in-law lost his life. So no wonder he really couldn't sing Silent Night, Holy Night. Be at the light. The light that was his hope. The light that he would follow. The light that sometimes he didn't know why there has to be this kind of darkness, this sort of death, this sort of suffering. The light that sometimes we just don't know why it's not. But it overcomes the darkness. It keeps overcoming the darkness. So again, when I sing Silent Night, Holy Night this year, I sing it differently from that. But even as I sing it differently, I know that my father-in-law sang it with light. The light of Jesus is stronger than the darkness of war, the darkness of suffering, the darkness of oppression, the darkness that is in Ferguson, Missouri, the darkness, the darkness, the darkness. We will all be familiar with the darkness. But as we follow Jesus, the darkness will never overcome the light. This year will be no different. Next year will be no different. Just as it was a year ago, a decade ago, or a decade from now, the light is gonna keep shining in the darkness. In this opening words, uh, opening, um, it says there, there was a man sent from God whose name was John, and so it's not the gospel writer of John, but we know him as John the Baptist. And it says that John came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. And then he makes this you know, clear statement, John the Baptist was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. Again, always pointing to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the light. So we could read it like this. Um, he came uh, as a witness to bear witness about Jesus, that all might believe uh, in Jesus. He was not Jesus, but came to bear witness about Jesus. Then it says this true light, this true Jesus, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Again, this going back to that in the beginning, in the beginning, yet the world did not know him. You know Jesus, but do you know Jesus? Again, the people that were in the world that day, they knew Jesus. They knew the stories of Jesus, but some of them did not know Jesus. And so John would write this. Uh, and then it says, he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. His own people, they knew that there was going to be a Messiah that would come one day. They knew that there would be someone coming from the line of David. They knew, they knew, they knew, but they, they, they didn't even receive this Jesus. And then this verse 12, this verse 12 is one of these verses that, uh, again, I don't think we can get enough radiance from this verse. I don't think we can get enough radiance of this verse that would just, it would be one of these verses that would just kind of take hold of us more than we take hold of it. And it verse it says this, but to all who did receive him, did receive this Jesus, who believed in his name, who believed in this Jesus, he gave the right to become children of God. This radiant verse, it's filled with this promise. It's filled that we who are children of God even though sometimes we're oppressed by the darkness, we don't understand the darkness, we wish the darkness would go away, but yet this radiance that we're children of God, we're children of God, we're gonna know the light, we're gonna be led into the light, this darkness will not overcome. 
the light of Jesus that is in us because we are children of God. Then it says, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God, but of God. Here's this promise. We're born of God, of God. Not something that we do. Not something that we believe or don't believe. It's something that God is doing. It's a promise. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift that, that we become children of God daughters of God, sons of God, no matter what your age, you're children of God, I'm a child of God, you're a child of God. Oh, the promise, the radiance of that promise. That would be one of those verses that, again, if you got a Bible, you know, the regular paper version, highlight that verse and think about that verse, meditate about that verse, pray that verse. If you got an electronic app, highlight that verse in your electronic app, this, but maybe even memorize, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And then this whole uh, word play in those opening verses, uh, with the word word, uh, he comes back to in verse 14, just to make sure, just to make sure we know exactly what it is that John is trying to tease into us, right, that he wants us to know. He wants us to know this Jesus, just not know the Jesus, but know Jesus. He says, in this word, this radiant word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that's where we're leading again this year. That's the whole story of Christmas, isn't it? This word became flesh, he became a baby. Dwelt among us. He took a breath like we take a breath. He got breathing in and out, breathing in and out, breathing in and out, and he did these things that were just uh, we just can't get enough of. He keeps being this radiance. We sing new songs. We sing old songs. We sing songs that will be created this year. We're, we're going to do all this light and haze and all this uh, um, screaming guitars and, and drums and piano and just all these things, all of it because of Jesus, because of Jesus, because of who he is. He became flesh and dwelt among us and we can't get enough of it. And then it goes on and says, and we have seen his glory, this radiant glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Can you get enough of that? In verse 14, is one of these words, highlight in your Bible, highlight in your app. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. Glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And I don't know how I can get more of that radiance. But I know I do want more of it. I want more of it for you. Uh, these words, these inspired words, oh, may they take hold of us. Then in the little uh, parentheses here in verse four, 15, goes back to John the Baptist. John bore witness about him and cried out, this was of he whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. We know that John the, uh, the Baptist, according to Luke's gospel, John the Baptist is like six months older than Jesus. He's the cousin of Jesus in some way, somehow in that. Then they uh, marry uh, the mother of Jesus and Elizabeth, uh, John's mother, they have this encounter together, one of these wonderful scenes that it's recorded in, in Luke uh, chapter one, but we know that John is actually older in Jesus, but yet John says, ah, I'm not older, because I had a beginning. Even though there's Jesus in his little baby body has this beginning, ah, he's God, and so he doesn't have a beginning, and so he's coming after me, but yet he's before me, and ah, I can't get enough of that radiance. And we know that John, the Baptist, has what we would call a dark end. I mean, literally. Head. But yet, he doesn't have a dark end. Because right now, he's in the light. Darkness did not overcome John. Light overcame the darkness of John's death. And he's in the light, the eternal light of Jesus. And then verse 16, again, one of these verses, highlight, highlight in your, in your paper Bible, in your uh, app Bible. For from the fullness we have all received grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. Grace last year, grace a decade ago, grace this year, grace a decade from now. Grace upon grace, the radiance, the radiance, the radiance that will never go out. And it will never go out in our lives. Then uh, verse 18, no one has ever seen God. Again, goes back to this kind of like no one has ever seen God, but the only God who is at the Father's side, and he's talking about Jesus. That's where Jesus is now. He's at the Father. He has made him known. You know Jesus, but do you know Jesus? I, I love the, the Gospel of John. I just uh, love the, the whole story about the person who we know as the disciple of John and we know that John was probably just a, maybe a teenage boy when he begins to follow Jesus 
we know that kind of the Bible and from church uh, history and maybe some church legend, that John is the only one of the 12 disciples that doesn't die a martyr's death, that he actually ends up probably dying of old age. Uh, again, he probably writes Revelation, the book of Revelation, when he's in his 90s. That's sometimes what Bible historians and scholars tell us. Uh, we know that in the Gospel of John, that John ends up describing himself uh, during the, the, the time of Jesus' uh, um, the, the, the last night before he gets, that John describes himself as the one who is kind of the beloved. We know that Jesus is the one that talks to John from the cross. And so John is there watching Jesus die on the cross. And Jesus spouts John and says, John, here's your mother. He's pointing to his mother Mary. He's thinking about his mother Mary. And Mary, here's your son. And somehow Mary and John end up having this relationship and uh, John, John, uh, John. Years later after he maybe writes the gospel of John, he's going to write these, what we know as 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Here's how he's going to open up 1st uh, John and he's going to make some connection to the gospel of John. He says, uh, that which was from the beginning. <laughs> there it is again. That which was from the beginning. Again, John just can't get over the radiance of thinking about the beginning, the beginning. And then he says, which we have heard, he, he does all this kind of tactile stuff, things that we can uh, touch, things that we can see, things that we can hear. He, go, he goes, um, that which we have seen with our eyes, because we, uh, we, you know, we got this light, we can see him with our eyes, which we looked upon him and have touched him with our hands concerning this word of life. There's that word, the word, the radiant word. This life was made manifest so that we could see it, that we would know it, that we know Jesus and that we would know Jesus and we have seen it and we testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, this eternal life which was with the Father who was made manifest to us, that which we have seen. Again, there's those, there, he just wants to make sure we see it, we see it, we know this Jesus, and we know this Jesus, and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship was with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, the wonder that he would call him Jesus Christ. The, oh, you know, radiance of that name again the radiance that no darkness can put on you can use the name Jesus Christ in horrible filthy ways in dark ways but that name Jesus Christ the light of it the power of it the salvation of it cannot be put out Jesus the Christ this Messiah this anointed one the power of that this radiance of it this radiant Jesus and we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. John knows darkness real well. He knows oppression real well. There's a couple of times that we hear in church history, almost loses his life as a martyr, but then it doesn't happen and he lives on. And he knows that all of his fellow disciples that walked with Jesus, following Jesus, he knows how each one of them died a martyr's death. He's familiar with darkness. But he has this joy. Because he doesn't, he doesn't just know Jesus. He knows Jesus. One uh, application and then we'll be done. Because of the radiance of Jesus and the radiance of Christmas, and because of the darkness that is still very present in our lives and present in my life. Always usually at the beginning of Advent, it's just something that I've done over the years, is uh, because of the radiance of Jesus. I want to put this out for all of us to consider and to maybe wrestle with and do something with it this year. I don't know how you use alcohol as we move towards Christmas. And the reason that I always bring that out is that from my background, alcohol was even more abused as it got towards Christmas. Again, uh, there's days off. You're celebrating, you know, some downtime. So why not get more. I, I just heard a story I didn't know, you know, but that is one of the new story, one of the dark stories that are out there. Do you know that there's a, now a new name for the Wednesday before Thanksgiving? We got Black Friday. Wednesday night is now called Blackout Wednesday 
because a lot of people, because it's going to be off on Thursday for Thanksgiving, they go out and get, sometimes people do that towards Christmas. Over the years, I've been more than aware. And again, I'm glad that they come on Christmas Eve. But sometimes there are people that come in here having abused alcohol before they come into a house of God. So I don't know where that hits you. I know there's a lot of families that, you know, we don't escape this uh, abuse of alcohol. So I would just put before you the radiance of Jesus can bring a light into the darkness of alcohol, however it affects your family. The radiance of Jesus has brought a difference in my life when it comes to alcohol. So I just want to put that before us because we want to follow this Jesus. So the last question, is there space in us for God's radiant word? I'm going to go to a passage in Ecclesiastes 5 verse 2. Again, one of these words, one of these passages that uh, again, just keeps getting a hold of me and maybe it'll get a hold of you. It says, do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven. Again, there's this big idea. God is in heaven. The fullness of heaven. The beginning. There is no beginning with God. He started beginning. There is no end with God. There's going to come an end, but there won't be any end with God. He'll just be, keep going. So God is in heaven and you are on earth. Again, as much as we know that this is a huge earth and maybe some of you will be able to go to Hawaii, maybe some of you will go to Mexico, maybe some of you will go to the Caribbean, maybe some of you will go to Disney. Um, there's this small earth that we really live on. You know that. And there's a small place that most of us usually live. So we're here on earth. But there's this God, there's this God. And so the, the, the writer of Ecclesiastes just reminds us, do not uh, uh, be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on, on earth and so let your words be few. See, is there space that if our words are few, this radiant word, this radiant word can get into us a little bit more. So I don't know how many words are in you. I don't know how many words you're going to hear today. I don't know how many words you're going to think today. I don't you know, know what it is what you tell yourself when you look in the mirror. But if we can let our words be few today and into these days to come, and let the radiant word, let this radiant word, let these words from the Gospel of John, and I would so encourage you to maybe read the Gospel of John during these next number of weeks. Maybe your 15 minute chair time tomorrow. Maybe move into the Gospel of John. Whatever you're doing now, if you're doing something, go back to that in January, I don't know. You do what you wanna do. But this radiant word, if there's space, if there's space, maybe it'll do a, a radiant light in how you do Christmas this year. You know Jesus. Ah, and I pray that you all know Jesus. Let's stand and pray. Uh, Jesus, uh, for the wonder of who you are, for the radiance of who you are, I mean, I've done my best this morning to just try to explode these uh, opening words, these opening images from the Gospel of John, and oh, there's more. <laughs> There's more. I mean, verse 12, verse 14, verse uh, 15, verse uh, 16. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Be more radiant, be more radiant, be more radiant. Thank you for, again, this season of Advent. Thanks for all the wonders that are to come. Help us, Jesus, to enjoy the radiance of you. We pray these things in your name. Amen.